did a recent video with the Gwinnett Woodworkers Association on their process of making uh, segmented beads of courage boxes. If you missed that video, I'll have a link in the show notes as well as at the end of this video. And I left that, uh, uh, that shop with, with a uh, segmented blank that looked like this particular one with an oak bottom and a, uh, a piece of round cut oak for, for the top and a, a bead to go in the, the top of the project. Uh, all I had to do was find a spindle scrap suitable for, for a knob. And there, I'm using this piece of mesquite. All right, we're going to have some challenges doing this segmented box, and uh, I'm going to be I'm going to uh, open my kimono and tell you this is the first time I have ever turned a segmented piece because to me the fun is not spending 90% of your time gluing up a block of wood and 10% of your time turning, but I'd rather spend the time finding a nice piece of wood and, and turning it. So, but that'd be what it is. Here, here we go. So, how do I chuck it? I don't have a I'm not sure that this would center it if I uh, had jaws that went in there and then it's uh, got flat sides. Uh, I don't have a good way of holding it between centers. So the, what's going to work for me is I'm going to take this backer plate that I use. It's actually a vacuum vacuum chuck, but I use it for other things. It's got this 1 16th inch closed cell foam on it. It happens to have a threaded back, although if you make one, you could use a, uh, you could use a face plate ring or a face plate. So I'm going to thread this on. I've had this for years. Works very well. Now, um, I think when they, they made this, they didn't mark they didn't mark the bottom, but the inside had a mark on it as shown in this picture. And I think they whoever glued it up was not the person that did the marking and they got it uh, their their production assembly backwards because the mark should have been on the outside to center this but they did get this I think uh, roughly centered the, the trick is how do we do it so I'm using a center finder to measure where I, where the, the center is on this and now we're going to bring up the tailstock and I'm going to use a use this this tailstock the one my original manufacturer robust style or one way style that came with my lathe so I'm just going to bring this up support it with my hand and crank it in and these sides should be fairly parallel so I'll bring that in now let's now let's kind of test it I'm going to use a larger tool rest of course and this is a pretty good size piece so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it down to about 800 to start with we're just gonna come in and start knocking off the corner Little pull cuts. We'll come back to that corner. Now we're just going to come in from the side and start dealing with these chips. This is pretty dry wood, so I'm going to have a lot of these chips hitting my hand. I've got a couple of choices. I could put a painter's tape around here, but it won't stick, so I'm going to go ahead and put on a glove. Now obviously, or maybe not so obviously, when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to have to stop and deal with that when, when I reverse chuck it because I don't want to be cutting into this foam, foam board. catch there again this is side grain uh, cross grain so I'd be better coming in like this now I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to a uh, half inch spindle gouge for a cleaner cut Getting a little too far away from the tool rest for this particular cut, so let me do, switch to a, a back to a smaller tool rest. Uh 
I'm getting pretty pretty close. I'm getting a little bit of tear out with some of this wood, so I may have to go sharpen this one more time. I think I can get the speed up a little bit now. Just running true, get it up to about a thousand. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift till it cuts. Okay, getting a little bit of tear out. Not sure how to deal with that. I'm gonna try something. Um, see if I can get rid of some of this tear. I'm gonna try a little different tool. I'm gonna switch to this radius uh, scraper and come in at it at a slight angle, lift it. Lift it till I see it cut. I think I gotta put a fresh burr on here. That's cutting much better. Wow, and that's got rid of just about all the tear out, so I think that's probably as good as I'm gonna get with that. Uh I'm going to worry about sanding it later. Now we do need to round the bottom. I'm going to take just a little bit more off the bottom. I think I'll probably use this for that, just because it's convenient. All right, now we got to put a recess here on the bottom. So I'm going to mark the recess here. I, you can't see the line, but I'm marking it with a pencil so you can see it. I've already taken a compass and marked that, and that's how big it is for the chuck jaws that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use my shop made dovetail tool to put that recess in. The beauty of this tool is, is you can do it even when you're blocked by the tailstock and the, and the live center. I can come in there and clean it out. I'm going to do a little bit of that cleaning out with, a, I think, a spindle gouge here. I don't need to go much more than an eighth of an inch deep. Right, so now we're going to come in there with this. It's a scraper, so I want the handle to come up just a little bit, and we're just going to go straight in. Alright, I'm not going to have too many opportunities to get back in there and clean that up, so let me get in there with something, uh, a round scraper, get rid of those tool marks. These are wide jaws, so I need to make sure I've got a nice flat area for them. That, that's looking good, got a nice 1 8 inch recess, much bigger than that, and it's just going to look, look kind of clunky. Um, I've got this parallel. I'm not going to do anything fancy with the shape. I could probably round over the bottom a little bit more, but uh, I think maybe I will. Just give it a little more lift off the table. I'm going to come back here just a little ways. Go back to the bowl gouge. Come in here. Start a little further back. Just nip that corner off. Roll it over a little bit. Okay, I like that a little better. It tucks in just a little bit better. So it won't look like the table sucking it down. Okay, time to reverse chuck it with the uh, chuck. I'll just take that off. Pull off tail stock. Take this off. Replace this with the chuck. Set it aside wide rimmed bowl jaws just because they're very strong 
normal jaws probably be fine, but I wanted a little bigger recess. And now pressing in from the center. Gonna tighten it up. Now, because I'm unfamiliar with turning segmented work and I'm a little concerned about any hazards that might be there because I know so little about it, I'm going to be extremely cautious. I'm going to use a center that's got a 90 degree cone on it. This is a, a, a Falcon Live Center from Record, Record Power, and it's got a removable cone. And this cone will not put as big a dimple or damage at the bottom as much as a regular 60 degree cone. <laughs> Also, it extends out a little bit, so I'll be able to get this easily into the, touch the bottom. And this is just so I can finish doing the outside, a little shaping. So I'm going to extend this to about three inches. And it just gives me a little extra margin of security that if this thing flies apart, uh, this might capture some of it. Probably needless concern, but again, I don't know what I don't know about turning segmented items. Some of y'all far more experienced that, that, than I am. So I'm going to come in from this side and and continue this, this parallel line. Back here. I don't think it's running out of balance as much as it looks. This is not too bad. This this is a potential problem. All right, so here we go. Make sure I got that good pressure on that. Tighten it up. Here we go. Get the speed back up a little bit. I'm going to stand out of the line of fire by doing a push cut. Now I'm going to get ready to start blending these edges here. I'm almost there. Now I'm going to come in from the other side. Now, because I'm going to have a lid on this thing, I want to bring this in just a little bit. So let's just put this on my hip here and just bring it around a little bit. And that looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, now, now I've got to clean up the inside. That's going to be a probably one of the biggest challenges. I'm going to back this out of the way, take off the live center. All right, I'm going to try something. I need to come in there, I think, with some kind of scraper. I could probably do a bowl gouge rolled over. Um, and I might give that a try to at least start. Just being very cautious. If I open it up, if I open it up, 12 o'clock, I'm going to get a tremendous catch, so I'm going to roll it over closer to 9 o'clock. Alright, now that I've got a little bit of it scraped away, I think I can come in straight like this. I think I'll lower the tool rest a little bit and get it a little bit closer. This gives me a feel for how deep, I, how much I'm going to take off the wood. Uh, it's not perfectly round yet. does not need to be as thick as it is. So I think I'll take it down a little bit. I'm just going real slow. Let the, let the wood come to the tool. Ride the bevel. Engage the cut. It's still, again, this is not as aggressive as it is actually turning a bowl. Uh, because there's more side grain and less end grain. I 
Light cuts. If I get too much in there, it's going to jerk this thing out of my hand, I'm afraid. Most of y'all have seen me before know I'm not, not a big proponent of uh, carbide tools for most turning, but there may be a place for it. And if there is a place for it, for me, this may be it. Raise this up just a little bit. So I'm going to use this cheap Chinese carbide I featured in a video some years back, a round one. And it's flat carbide, so I think I'm going to roll it up just a little bit. And I'm going to not go down too deep and just take a few practice cuts and see how it does. It's doing pretty well. I'm down at the bottom that I haven't even touched yet. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do, I have a, uh, a different tool rest, a box tool rest that will give me some flat support. So let's switch to that. Again, some of this may be unnecessary. You all with more experience with this uh, segmented stuff feel free to weigh in make sure i cut right and just about center okay now i've got a flat rest that i think i feel a little more comfortable with going in okay. so now i'm going to come in and again roll it over just a little bit i think so it won't be quite as aggressive I'm keeping it flat on the tool rest, or the, the whole tool supported on the tool rest. Nope, still got a ways to go down to the bottom. Well. What I need is a little more light inside. Let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. You don't need to see what you're doing to hollow while you're doing it, but a little light certainly won't hurt. Look, almost touch bottom. have more than one type of scraper I'm going to try something different I'm going to use this this slightly uh, rounded uh, square edge scraper and I think I can keep the bottom off of it and I'm going to use this magnet to know when I'm about to touch down so I can be especially careful and I'm just going to kind of go in there brace it with my arm and just come down to very bottom and just try to stop before I get to the end of that magnet Pressing it down with a couple of fingers. We're just going to come right down the side. Oh, this is sweet. This is working real well. Okay. I've got it. Nothing that Sandy won't deal with. Now, I'm going to decide, do I want this bowl box to be any thinner? And I think I do. It's awfully heavy. <laughs> um, so let me go down maybe another eighth of an inch. <coughs> Frankly, I like this square scraper, I think, better than the carbide. Um, so I'm going to come in there like that. Just ride it on down here. Too bad I didn't capture that on video. I ripped the bowl off as I was getting near the bottom doing a final cleanup of this carbide. Let's see what kind of damage I did. Um, nothing I can't clean up. Nothing I don't think I can... I think I can put it back on there for what I've got to do. I pretty much I think I'm going to call, the, call that bottom done. Still got a little ridge though. I had it flat, maybe that was a little too aggressive. Uh, I'm much happier, I think, using the square scraper because it's just a broader stock. It'll be a lot more stable on here, and that, that corner edge will, will do just fine. 
I'm going to use this negative rake. It's not going to be too aggressive, but again, it's going to be flatter than that carbide. I'm going to come off the bottom just a little bit, back it out, and then just, it's just that corner smoothing I need to do, about an inch or so. Okay, that cleaned it up. Yeah. It might have been flat, but it still wasn't tr running true. So if I can't sit a little, a little air here, just a little bit, yes. That's good, that's good. Sandpaper. Now, I need to go ahead and sand this while I can, while it's mounted here. Um, so let's get after it, let's get after that. To reach down in the bottom, Clean up the bottom a little bit. Slow the speed down a little bit. We'll start with 80 grit. We're gonna change the orientation. It's easier to get in there with this than it is with an angle drill. We'll just change the articulation. You know, I'm wondering, based on the curve of this, whether I'd be better off with a 2-inch. I'll switch to a 2-inch to do the inside. I think it'll work better. Get down the corner. Okay, the next step is uh, let's turn the lid. So let's go ahead and take this box off. This side. Take that off. And we got a couple of ways we can start this, but the goal is we want to put a small tenon on the outside that we can hold the lid for reversing and shaping the inside. Um, let me just explore with you the options. One option is we can drill a hole, mount this screw, ch screw chuck on, and, and do that. The other option is to do it against that backer board like we did before. That's the approach I'm going to use this time. A lot of it depends on what, how you're going to uh, mount your knob. If, if you don't care if you damage a hole all the way through it, then, then a screw chuck might be a moment faster. Uh, but if you're not going to mount the knob with a through hole, then you don't want to drill a hole with your screw chuck. It might affect your design. So we're going to choose the option that gives us the most options. So let's bring up the tailstock. Okay. So we're going to take a pencil and mark where we want the uh, tenon to be. That's going to be the tenon. We're just going to come straight in. I'm going to use a spindle gouge because it's handy. Raise this up a little bit. It's going to be for my normal jaws, so. About an eighth of an inch ought to be, ought to be plenty for this. Need a little cleaner shoulder in there. Okay. Now we can go ahead and reverse it. We'll do the top later. I just want a way to do the bottom first. Press it in the middle. Tighten it down. Tighten it down again. Okay. Now this is going to be the bottom. Now I want to cut a recess in the bottom so we can reverse it to do some, some more work on the top. So let's go ahead and mark, mark that recess. We can use these dividers. Okay. That ought to just about fit. Touching this side, not that side, and adjust it till they line up. And 
And there we go. So let's open this up. Um, we're going to actually do a couple of things before we even bother with that. I'm going to shape this round and then we're going to put a tenon on it. So let's do that. Use a small bowl gouge. We're going to come straight in. If we do it, if we have the tool rest this way, we're going to be fighting in grain. So we're going to come straight in sideways so as to minimize that. And let's true this up a little bit. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Now, we're going to make a, a lip, so we need to figure out exactly how wide the dimensions are of the, uh, the box. So we want to measure the inside. We don't want a snug fit, but we want, don't want a sloppy fit either, so that's going to be our starting position. We got to go ahead and remove the live center so we don't get Turner's elbow. Okay, same as before. Touch this side, not that side. Want a slight concave right here. So the outside will fit so we don't see any seasonal gaps. And I've got this coming in just a little bit. Now let's just do some trial fits with the actual box. See how far we got to go. We don't have far. Let's just make another refinement. Get the speed up a little bit. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That's an approximation. I'm putting just a slight slant on it, so if it'll just slip over, then we can square it up. Normal box lid fitting step. Just beginning to slip on. I'm going to be shaping the, the lid profile when we turn it around. It's going to, I'm going to have a thickness there on the edge, something like that. Let's go ahead and mark it. Okay. So now we're going to hollow, hollow this out. We know we don't want to go too far. We've got at least a you know, we're down about an eighth of an inch right here. So we don't want to hollow really much more than, uh, than that line I've marked. So we'll kind of use that as a, as a reference guide. Okay. So now we can do, do the recess. I'm going to take out some of the, the wood out of the middle. And we're going to hollow this, out, this lid out, so let's go ahead and do that. And that'll give us a better feel for that recess. That's a couple of draw cuts. Now we're going to pick up the cut just inside that lip. this dovetail tool there we go so the max thickness that I want to go 
is no more than about that. So then I hold it up here and whoa, I see I got I got a pretty good ways to to go and that's good. Now my my challenge is what what do I want to do down here? I've got to mount a knob on the other side. You know, something like something it looks something like this. Now that that I've got three options of how I can mount it on this side. That's going to affect what I want to do here. I can either drill a drill a hole or cut a hole on the back side that this will actually fit into, but it doesn't give me a real strong hold. I could put a screw in here to hold the knob on the other end and then put a plug on it, and, and that's, a, that's a, a, a viable option. Or the other possibility is I could drill a hole all the way through, and when I turn the knob, I turn a tenon and it'll fit all the way through and it's decorated. And I think for me, the fastest way to do this is probably going to be make a recess that the knob will fit in with a screw and then plug this with something. Contrasting wood. Maybe. Okay. I've decided I need to, I need to have this recess deeper because I want to hollow this some more. Uh, and this won't go but so deep. So I'm going to switch to a box scraper to open it up a little bit more. Okay. Now I've got a, a very deep recess, deeper than I need, but that's okay because I'm going to get rid of some of this excess material here on the bottom. Now I want to do a little bit of detailing in here. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think what, when I plug this hole that's going to be here, I think I'll do that with a, a chattered piece of chatter work that kind of looks like a top. I think that'll look kind of cool. Uh, so I need to go ahead and get rid of this wood in the middle. Kind of doing some of this on the fly here. Okay. Now I think I want to put a small bead right here on the outside. So let's do that. I'll just use a bead beading tool. Come in here right here. I might even just round it, soften it a little bit right there. And uh, maybe I'll put a series of three of them. Roll it over. Roll it over. One more. Roll it over. Roll it over. Okay. Now I think, that, I think that'll look, look good. Um, and I think I can still hollow this out a little bit more and leave that bead proud. So I'm just going to come in because I want this top to be somewhat light. Yeah, okay. So I think that's that's kind of the profile I'm looking for. Sand it off camera and then we'll come back. Okay, I've got this sanded up to 320, uh, got it dressed up. Let's go ahead and reverse chuck it and shape the outside of the box top. So I think I want a bit of an OG from the outside to here, and then we'll decide. Actually, before we go any further, I think I want to go ahead and turn the, uh, the knob. So let's just take this off. All right, we're going to get, use this little scrap of mesquite. Since I've got a little extra wood on this end, this is going to be the top. But I need to finish shaping the bottom, uh, open, uh, scallop it a little bit, drill a hole. So let's just go ahead and use the little tenon we've already got to hold this. And then we'll sort of put a little tenon, a large tenon on the top, shape the bottom, and then we'll turn it around again. I think we'll... Do something we can grab with our 40 millimeter jaws. It'll be about a little bit bigger than that. So we'll just use this beading and parting tool. Get the speed up a bit. Now we can reverse it. I'm going to go ahead and take off a little bit of this, this top. It's not definitely not going to be parted. Whoa! Well, that wasn't pretty. Well, we got a little 
bit of a knot there. That's okay. I can still grab it. That's not a, not a problem. I love my little SC2 chuck. It's direct threaded. And it works great on smaller projects like this. So we're going to take this down just a bit. We want it to be smaller than the... Uh, it's going to fit it within, within here and it will shape the flow of this into it some kind of way. We'll have to come back to that. So I want to take it down. That looks good. I want a very slight taper and I want just the slightest hint of a, a dome in there to make sure it'll fit. Basically I'm truing it up. Well, now I'm going to go find a screw chuck and figure out what size uh, drill bit I need. Okay, I've reversed it in the chuck. I'm going to come in there with this 1 8 inch uh, drill bit and drill a hole that's going to match the screw chuck we're going to use. I've already pre-drilled this. Okay, now I found a screw chuck that will fit, so let's go ahead and... I'll just screw it on here while it's, while it's here, get it started anyway. And then we're going to take, because the screw, it, you just can't keep it down with glue. I put it on there and then I tighten it up like that. Get a nice nudge. Take it off here. Take it off here. Here. And now we're going to shape the knob. This is going to be the widest part of the base. It's going to be hollowed in. You know, it's going to look something like something like this. But I've got to have a flat air at the top that's capable of of holding that bead. That bead's probably three eighths of an inch thick and oh, approximately three quarters of an inch across. Um, so let me measure that. And these are not uniform beads, so. Uh, Looks like I could start with a three eighths or a three quarter of an inch and then widen it a little bit to fit. So I think that's probably what I'll do. Why that bead is all right. That bead is just not quite as thick as this. So I want to stop because I want that edge of that bead probably to be proud just a little bit. Make sure I can get this these, this bead in and out is just a little piece of tape on the outside. So I got something to hold on to. I lost some footage as I finished change, as I changed the shape. Uh, I had one or two little cracks I sealed with uh, CA glue and some some dust from from the mesquite. So I uh, got the bead to fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Take the screw chuck loose. Now we're gonna put the normal jaws back on and remount the top so we can finish the finish the very top of the top. We need to drill a hole for the screw. And we need to make a very slight recess for that to fit down into. So we're going to reverse it from what we had before. Turn the inside in. So we've got access to the outside. So now we want to, the first thing I want to do is cut a recess that's going to, to match that. So let's measure those with calipers. And we'll sneak up one. I don't want to go very deep. I just want to not have a gap there. Okay. I think that'll that'll do it. Slow the speed down a little bit. Touch this side. Flat area for that knob to fit down into. Just raise the tool rest just a bit. I don't want to go down more than about an eighth of an inch. Not enough deep enough for the glue for me to feel confident with without a screw. So let's, so I'm going to make a very slight taper, get the speed up a little bit. Just go in at a very slight taper. And 
lower the middle just a little bit so it'll sit flat. And that fits in nicely. And now I want to think about how I want to join that. So I just want to have a flow, maybe a tiny little bead here at the base. Yeah. Drop the handle, rotate it. Soften that a little bit. Now I'm going to shape down from that bead. Maybe I'll make another bead right there. Just ease this in as a slight cove into that bead. Okay. Now I want to bring this down to where I marked that lip before. You may recall you want the, the edge of that lip to be at least that wide. I want to bring this down. Um, yeah, so it's cross grain, so it's like a bowl. So I'm going to go around in this direction. I'm going to use a half inch uh, spindle gouge, take away the wood on the end. And because I'm forgetful, I want to make sure I go ahead and drill a hole there. Um, since I've lost the ability to grab that now. So let's go ahead and drill that 3 8 inch, or that 1 8 inch hole. So let's make a tiny little divot. We're going to use our 1 8 inch screw. Okay, now we'll have a way to mount it. Now I just got to finish that, finish this shape. That can be thinner. All right, so I want to. I think I want to want to shear scrape this. I think I think I can cut away a little bit more of it before I try to scrape it. And now I just want to take this shear scraper and kind of smooth that edge over. Get after that with a little sandpaper. All right, so I've decorated a plug for that screw that's going to go through here and, and hold the knob, but yeah, it was off just a little bit because it was it was hard to measure the back of this where it's going to fit in the recess. So I chucked it up again with the recess that the uh, knob's going to fit in, and I'm just going to take this tiniest little bit of, of uh, slant on here so to make it fit. This seemed an easier solution than trying to sand it. It looks like it fits on the outside. And I think I'm going to call it good. Okay. <laughs> 